Eight. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, Chris? Good to see you, Dave. Yeah. Hey, hey Chris. Team, nice to meet you. What's happening? Well, today we're talking hovercrafts. Hovercrafts, indeed. This is a this is a Formula One unlimited class racer. Um, I use this base, uh, I use this only for uh, racing. It's a it, it's a fast machine, right? And the idea of the hovercraft is, in this case, I've got a lift engine. Mm -hmm. This blows the craft, uh, lifts the blows the bag up, and lifts the skirt up, and then the thrust system pushes the craft along. And if I'm not mistaken, Chris, we need about 14% of our thrust air going into the bag. Is that correct? Or Absolutely right. right. Yep. What happens is the bag. I have two types of air. I have bag air, which is the 14% you speak of, uh -huh. and then the remaining uh, air is sent down underneath the center of the craft and is blown out evenly around the underside of the skirt. Okay. So that's what it's that's what it's floating on. It's the inflated bag with that small cushion of air from the other. 86 percent exactly okay. what happens is the hard distance is lifted up about eight inches typically in a machine uh -huh. and then from there flotation of the friction the frictionless system is about a quarter to a half an inch of actual air that's leaking out all the way around the perimeter of the craft so chris if we go 20 feet long with our with our vehicle is it going to matter are we going to have enough of a lift engine yeah, actually, I think that at 20 feet, and typically uh, a machine that size would be between eight, seven and eight feet wide, mm -hmm. um, 20 to 25 horse is going to be a good amount of uh, engine to lift the system up. Okay. Is there a certain angle that that front one has to be at to get the air to the back of that 20 foot long boat? When you have a racing machine, okay, you're trying to, you're trying to, uh, to balance <clears throat> the forward air versus the, the vertical lift air. And so, in, in a, in a high-speed racecraft, it may be optimum to tip 10 to 15 degrees, such as this machine is. Okay. For ours, for a build such as just making it work, seeing if it's possible, we can go vertical and we can pretty much plan on that. It will be good. And really, that air will get off and will lift the back of the, back of the unit up. It's amazing. The trick is to make sure that you have the weight balanced, right, with the rider, uh -huh. and, and you have everything in equilibrium. If you get too much mass to the rear of the craft, you're gonna to have to add some sandbags or some kind of weight up to the front. Mm -hmm. Or the driver sits further forward. The driver is key in this. Where he sits helps the balance of the CG of the craft. That's something we didn't even think about. Yeah, so can I, can I make some notes? Yeah, yeah. I've got some rolling paper there. So, what we've got is a, uh, we've got a 55 inch fan, right? 50, yeah, 54. 54 inch fan. And so how, and, uh, what are we using, a uh, Subaru motor? Yes, it is an old carbureted Subaru. So how much do you think that that weighs? How much do you think the, the motor and the fan are weigh? That engine will come on around 200 pounds. Okay. Uh, to mount the engine properly, pulleys, accessory drive, electrical battery, it's going to be about another 100, 150 pounds. Okay. That will include belt system. Uh, the duct typically is about 20 pounds. Um, and then our rudders, you may hit another 20 to 25 pounds in the, the steering and rudder system. Okay. So basically, we just need to, if we've got our, if we've got our vehicle here, you know, whatever we end up with, we're just gonna basically need to have it have all of our weight equally distributed. So we've got some weight up here in the front engine, we've got weight here in the drive engine. And so we just need to we just need to so we're probably gonna have to shift the drivers more forward. Exactly. Because yeah. we're gonna have more weight in the back. The in this case the uh, twenty to twenty five horse colder V twin or a brakes, you know, whatever engine might be chosen, they're about a hundred 110 pounds after we dress them up with the fan and, and the sub assembly, all of the components that are needed. Okay. So you've got, like you said, 150 pounds forward, you've got an excess of 300 backwards. Mm -hmm. Easy calculation to keep the CG is going to be about 40% forward of the midpoint of the craft to keep you balanced. Okay. Right. Okay. So hang on, hang on just one second. <clears throat> I need to change the setting here so far back in the scratch. All right. Um, let me get a cutaway at the start and go ahead. Okay. So but Chris, what I'm understanding is that this, the motors that we're going to use are going to be strong enough to lift the 
whole thing, even if we have to come back to it some sand. Absolutely. In fact, key here is if, if we can get to the 25 horse, we can pretty much very poorly distribute the load okay. and still expect to have a successful build. Great. I think it would be a lot cooler if the driver was in the back. Yeah, man, like right. back here. Yeah, but I'm concerned that I also, if we take this thing out to the challenge, I also want to be able to perform. Right. And I want this thing to be competitive. Well, but what if actually, we, what if we were to run on, well, first of all, Chris, you sound really knowledgeable about this. Have you built a lot of these? I have. Um, I have. Uh, I'm about uh, five crafts myself into the design. Um, I well, into building crafts. Um, I've also worked with local uh, high schools, right, and uh, getting kids active and more knowledgeable in this area of engineering. Um, I've worked with three different high schools actually in this southeastern Michigan area. Oh, cool. This is all a hobby for me. I, I, I enjoy doing it, but it doesn't pay the bills, which makes it. So what were you saying, Dave, as far as the... Uh... Well, I mean, my, I guess my concern is that I think aesthetically this thing is going to be, you know, it's going to be really long. And we're going to probably try and use the whole length of the, of the airstream. So that means that it's probably going to be about 20, 20 feet, right? Yes. So it would be a lot cooler to have the rider sit farther back. But uh, if we have to have it sit in the middle... To be competitive, I mean, I hate to have the rider sit farther back in the back and then have the sandbag in front just for aesthetics. I would suggest that you stack your riders one in front of the other. Right, right. Um, you certainly could uh, could go more rearward. Mm -hmm. um, the craft is still going to perform even if it's tail heavy. It's going to it's going to move on us. Okay. And what we'll have to do is you'll just have a drag situation, so the craft will it'll look like a boat that's slightly below uh, plane speed. Okay. And just got to add more throttle. You got to okay. throttle it up a little bit more, and, and well, also we're going to angle the, the front motor a little bit. I know it's I know it's adding a little bit more engineering. We only have five days, but would that help this situation where maybe we had a little too much weight in the back? Typically, no. Okay. Um, Forty miles an hour seems to be about the the uh, optimum before you notice any forward uh, uh, forward air that helps uh, uh, flow into the system. Okay, so if we're looking at a 54 inch fan right here, and then how how tall is our bag going to be? About eight inches. Lifted the bag will be seven to eight, and if you bust the deck, how big is the deck? We're going to use a one inch uh, honeycomb material, okay. and and we're actually going to build it up. We're going to add uh, some height to the structure, but that'll be inside the bag itself. Right, and then we'll be able to add some, and then off the. So basically, the deck is going to. The deck is going to look something like this, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly. Okay. And then basically we're going to, we can just rivet it into or screw into here. Right. Okay. I would recommend aluminum angle, putting the aluminum angle on this inside. We can screw it into the deck and then screw through. Great. Right. Okay. Now, there, this is really key to the design. Oh, so then, I'm sorry, so then we just build the deck flat like this, and then this we just use aluminum angle. Exactly. Okay. Yes. 